So I'm going to give a bit of an overview of the automatic crosshair feature um, used in some of our fixes with 3D Mikosu and what it is, what it does, what it's for and what it is not. Now, there's been a little bit of confusion over this recently and uh, I wanted to clear that up and I'm hoping this video will answer some questions. Um, so firstly, the game I'm using for this demonstration is Far Cry 4. This is currently rendering in stereoscopic 3D. Um, and in order to render it in stereoscopic 3D, I'm using uh, a technology from NVIDIA called 3D Vision. Everyone who's purchased an NVIDIA graphics card in the last 5 to 10 years or so has this technology. Um, and all they need to use it is a 3D monitor that's 3D Vision certified and glasses bundle, or a 3D television to use it with 3D TV play. Uh, you can also use this even if you don't have that in sort of a, a demo mode. Um, called 3D Vision Discover. That'll render it using sort of red and green for each eye. So if you buy a cheap pair of red-green glasses from eBay, then you'd be able to use that mode as well. Um, now, before I get into the actual Crosshair um, feature itself, I do want to discuss briefly what how 3D Migoto even fits into this picture. So as I said, this game is rendering in stereoscopic 3D from the NVIDIA driver. Um, so why do we need 3D Vision? So, sorry, why do we need 3D Migoto? The answer is pretty simple. If I um, show what this game looks like without 3D Migoto, it looks like that. Now, you, even if you're not actually watching this on a 3D monitor, you can probably pretty easily see that there's some fairly severe issues here. For instance, there's a giant hole in the water near my gun. Um, you may also notice that the reflections in the water are at the incorrect depth, and um, shadows are not behaving quite right. In fact, if I run over to somewhere that has a more defined shadow, shadow that we can look at on the ground and disable 3D Migoto, then you'll see that that shadow jumps to completely the wrong depth. So 3D Migoto is pretty much mandatory for anyone who's actually using uh, 3D Vision and wants to play a game without their eyes bleeding, um, because it allows us to actually make the game render correctly in stereoscopy. Um, beyond what the NVIDIA driver is capable of doing by itself. So moving on to the crosshair. Now before I demonstrate the automatic crosshair, I actually want to go back and just show what a crosshair looks like in a regular game playing in 2D. So I'm going to switch 3D off. Now I do have to be a little bit careful. This game can glitch if I turn 3D off and, and move. So I'm just going to stay here. I'll turn 3D off, take a couple of shots and then turn 3D back on. So I've just turned 3D off. Um, now on the video you'll still see images for the left and right eye, but they're now identical. So I'm going to aim at this bucket, and I'm going to try to shoot the bucket with the crosshair that, that the game has provided. Okay, so that was, a, that was a success. You saw the bucket move and a bit of smoke came out. I'm going to turn the 3D on, just check I haven't triggered any glitches. No, it looks fine. Alright, now I'm going to run up close to the bucket. And now I'm going to do another test of the 2D crosshair, and I'm going to aim just below the bucket handle. So again, I'm turning 3D off. Again, the left and the right images are the same. This game is no longer rendering in 3D. I'm going to aim just below the handle and shoot. And you can see that the bullet hole that appeared on the bucket lines up with right where the crosshair was. So I'm going to turn 3D back on. Check that there's no glitches. Looks fine. All right. And um, so that's the 2D crosshair. Now, you should already be familiar with how a crosshair works in 2D. Um, it shows you where the bullet is going to go. That's pretty simple. If you don't know that, what are you doing watching this video? Alright, so now we're going to show what the problem is with Crosshair in 3D. So I'm going to hold down that key to disable 3D Migoto temporarily that I was using earlier. And now I'm going to try to aim at that bucket from this distance. And if you're watching this on a 3D display, you'll already see what the problem is. If you're not, you'll notice that I'm moving the camera left and right. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm actually a little bit confused at the moment. See, I'm trying to aim at this bucket with the crosshair. The problem is I can see one bucket and I can see two crosshairs. And the crosshairs are nowhere near each other. They're way out. So I'm going to firstly close my left eye and try to aim at this bucket with my right eye and shoot. And that was a complete miss. It looks like I'm hitting several meters to the right and somewhere in the background. So that didn't work. Now I'm going to try my other eye. So I'm closing my right eye. I'm aiming at this bucket using my left eye and shooting. And again that was a miss. And uh, yeah, that bullet is actually hitting the, the stairs that are somewhere to the, buck to the bucket's left. Now I'm going to run up to this bucket and try the uh, same test I did earlier to shoot just below the handle with the crosshair. So again, disabling 3D me go to, using my right eye, aiming right below the handle, shooting, and that's uh, nowhere near where I was aiming. Now let's try my other eye, so I'm using my left eye to aim, aiming the crosshair so it's lined up right below the handle, shooting, 
and again the bullet hole line was nowhere near where I was aiming. Um, both of those bullet holes are to either side of the bucket um, using a crosshair in 3D vision I completely failed to hit the target. And um, this is so much of a problem that NVIDIA actually provide their own solution to this called the Stereoscopic 3D Laser Sight which has to be enabled in the control panel and then in game using control F12. And uh, this is this is their attempt to solve the problem. It's a, a bit of a compromise between um, well, let me just show you anyway. So again, I'm going to hold down F9 to, to keep 3D Migoto out of the way. So this is what the game would look like if you just use the NVIDIA driver and enable the stereoscopic laser sight to help aim. So again, I'm going to try to line up the crosshair, but again, I have a problem because again, I can see a single bucket, yet I can see two crosshairs and I don't know which crosshair to line up with the bucket. So I'm going to close my left eye and line up the crosshair I can see through my right eye with the bucket and shoot. And I'm missing, I'm not entirely sure what I'm hitting at the moment, I can't see any smoke patterns, but I'm definitely missing that bucket. Now I'm going to try my other eye, so I'm closing my left eye using my right eye to line up the crosshair with the bucket and shooting, and I'm hitting something to the, to the bucket's left, so I've missed the bucket again. And um, this isn't just because I suck at aiming, I've got that crosshair lined up and I, I cannot hit it. Um, so now... The test, what I did close up, is actually not going to be so bad with this crosshair because the crosshair is not re being rendered at screen depth, it's actually being rendered maybe a couple of meters into the scene. And so if I try to use that to aim just below the handle of the bucket, now I can still see two crosshairs, but they're now a lot closer, so I can shoot between it and, and hit fairly well. So that's alright, but, but that's not the situation where the crosshair really helps. I mean, I can just shoot off the hip and still do a pretty good job of hitting the bucket, but the crosshair really doesn't do much of anything at this range. Um, so we need the crosshair to help at long distance. So we, and um, so the next thing that we might do is take the crosshair from the game and adjust it to a different depth, which is what I'm doing now. So this is a manual crosshair. Oops, wrong button. Um, this is a crosshair where I can manually set the crosshair from anywhere from screen depth to infinity or anywhere between. And this is a manually adjusted crosshair, right? And I do want to emphasize this is where the term auto crosshair came from because the auto crosshair doesn't involve having to manually set the crosshair's depth. Anyway, so I'm going to set the crosshair to near infinity because like I said, usually when using a crosshair the most important thing is to be able to hit targets that are far away. So I'm going to try hitting that bucket again. Now, at the moment, I can see a single crosshair and a, and a single bucket. The crosshair is actually too deep. It's beyond the bucket, but it's lined up fairly well, and I can shoot that, and I successfully hit the bucket. I saw some smoke come out of it. And if I now run up close to the bucket and try hitting... Yeah, okay, this is a bit of a problem still. Not too bad, but um, if I try hitting... Firstly, aiming with my right eye, aiming just below that bucket. Uh, below the handle, sorry, and now with my left eye. And uh, as you can see, I have two um, bullet holes. They're not too far apart, but they're not where I was aiming. Um, that is out. There is also a bigger problem if we just set the crosshair to this distance, which is that um, it's being rendered beyond geometry. For geometry that's far away, that doesn't matter too much. For geometry that's right near the screen, that's a bit of a problem. Um, this is a scenario where actually some people can't see either the wall or the crosshair in in this scenario. Um, now I personally can choose whether I'm focusing on the wall or the crosshair. The crosshair doesn't make any sense, but some people can't actually see either in this situation because this is not a situation that can arise naturally. This never happens in the real world where something would be rendered behind something else. Um, so what we want to solve this problem is a crosshair that can automatically figure out what depth it's supposed to render at so that it will give us an indication of where the bullet's going to go. And that's what the automatic crosshair does in 3D Migoto. Again, the only automatic part of this is that it's automatically adjusting the crosshair's depth. It isn't showing me that there's an enemy over there currently shooting. It's not highlighting that at all. It doesn't know that there's an enemy there. It's not intelligent. All it's doing is, show, is trying to line up the crosshair with the depth of whatever is underneath the crosshair. So in this case, if I aim at that bucket and try to hit it using the automatic crosshair, I successfully hit it. The smoke came out of the bucket. I'm still manually aiming. I'm still manually firing. This is still me doing it. Um, and that's no, adva no advantage compared to the 2D crosshair in the game. And now if I run up close to this bucket and shoot it just below the handle, then that bullet hole appeared right where the crosshair was. Now the crosshair is not 
influencing where that bullet hole will appear. That bullet hole would appear there regardless of where the crosshair is. It'll appear there regardless of whether I'm using the automatic crosshair or whether I'm using the crosshair from the game. Right? This is not changing the aiming at all. All this is doing is changing where the crosshair renders on the screen to help line up. And that's only to catch up to, to where our 2D brothers were. Now there has been a question as to whether this automatic crosshair feature could be used to give someone a advantage in a competitive multiplayer game, and the answer is quite simply no. I mean, as you've already seen, all this crosshair is doing is trying to catch up to where people playing the game without stereoscopic 3D already had. But I'm going to show some a situation where this automatic crosshair is actually a clear disadvantage. So. Let's say hypothetically I was playing a multiplayer game and I wanted to hide in this bush for a bit of stealth and let's say that my target is this um, animal sitting on um, that table over there. I'm actually thinking maybe I should use these guys since they've conveniently come along. So in this case I'm trying to line up... No, they've already been killed. So if I try to line up the crosshair with that target then you may see that there's a problem that the crosshair is jumping around a lot and uh, it's jumping around a lot because it can't actually tell what I'm aiming at and it's seeing that there are some leaves near the camera and it's thinking that the bullet's going to hit the leaves and well it may actually be true the bullet would probably would hit those leaves but that's not very useful because the bullet's going to pass through those leaves and continue traveling into the animal so again if I use my right eye to aim I'm going to miss and if I use my left eye to aim I'm going to miss um, whereas if I was playing in 2D um, which I'll do now so I've just switched to 2D and now I'm aiming at the animal and I've hit the animal. In 2D the crosshair lines up and in 3D, even with the automatic crosshair, the crosshair does not line up in this scenario. I would probably actually have to move out of cover so that there are no leaves between me and the target and then I can successfully shoot the target. But at that point I've exposed myself to enemy fire, so in terms of competitive multiplayer, this is clearly a disadvantage. There are some other reasons that using 3D Migoto and more generally using 3D Vision is only a disadvantage for competitive multiplayer. And uh, to show one of those, I'm going to bring up the performance monitor that's built into recent versions of 3D Migoto. This shows the overhead that 3D Migoto is adding to various parts of the game. This is just the CPU overhead and uh, an estimation of how many frames per second that may be costing um, if, in a scenario where the player was CPU bound. And uh, as you can see, the current frame per second estimate is looks like it's roughly 4 frames a second, maybe even close to 5 frames a second in total that using 3D Migoto is costing me in this game. And uh, in a competitive multiplayer game I absolutely would not want that 5 frame a second cost. I would want my frame rate to be as high as possible. In fact, if I was a serious player in a competitive multiplayer game, I would go out and buy myself a 144Hz monitor, or at least a 120Hz monitor. I would be playing in 2D and I would be trying to maximize my frame rate. And I'd probably be maximizing it by turning down settings inside the game. Um, to increase the frame rate until I can actually hit what the monitor is capable of. That would increase my reaction time and give me an edge. However, in 3D, um, using 3D Migoto, I already have a roughly 5 frames a second hit just from using 3D Migoto. And in fact, the fact that I'm using 3D Vision at all means that I'm already capped to 60 frames a second at most. At the moment, since I'm recording in Shadow Play, my frame rate is a little bit lower than usual. But even if I were to stare at the ground, um, you can see that the frame rate can only really just get up to around 60 frames a second or slightly below. And so in a competitive multiplayer game this would absolutely be a disadvantage, you wouldn't want that at all. Um, the reason that people will use 3D Vision is um, sort of twofold. Firstly, eye candy. It makes the game look a lot better. Um, we're not actually enhancing the graphics at all. This isn't something like Sweet Effects where we're adding extra post-processing post effects. Um, we're just making the effects that were already in the game render correctly in stereo 3D, but that does look a lot better than the game would in 2D. And um, the other reason is because someone who's already played video games in 3D find, typically finds it very difficult to go back to playing a game in 2D. It's, it's very much a matter of once you start gaming in 3D, you just can't go back. And so we have to go to lengths to make games work in 3D if the developers aren't willing to do that um, themselves. So anyway, I hope that clears up some of the misunderstandings about what the automatic crosshair feature is in 3D Migoto. Like I've already said, it is not something that's giving us an advantage, it's just kind of trying to catch up back to, um, to make up for the disadvantage that we have of playing in 3D at all. Anyway, thank you for your time.